Hey, welcome to Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I wanna to talk to you guys about using modules in Python. Now, a module is essentially just a Python file that we can import into our current Python file. So, for example, if I wrote a Python file that had a bunch of like useful functions or useful variables or you know other things like that, I could take that file, I could import it into the file I'm currently working on, and I could actually access all of those functions, all of those variables, all the stuff from that external file inside the file that I'm currently working on. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can use modules, and then we'll talk about like you know where you can find awesome modules and, and really why modules make Python an awesome language. So over here in my text editor, I actually created this file and it's called useful tools. Dot Python and basically this file just has a bunch of sort of like useful tools that I might want to use in one of my programs So you'll see over here. I have some variables. This one is telling me how many feet are in a mile This one's telling me how many meters are in a kilometer and then we have this list here Which lists out all of the members of the Beatles. Um, I also have a couple different functions down here so I have this get file extension function and this uh, basically just will, you know, you give it a file name, it'll tell you what the extension is. And then we have this other function down here, which simulates rolling a dice. So you pass it a number. If I pass it like a six, it would roll a six sided dice. If I pass it a nine, it roll a nine sided dice, etc. So this is like a Python file that I wrote and it has some useful stuff in it. And honestly, there's a lot of stuff in here that I might want to use in the other Python files that I work with. So let's say I'm over here at this app.python file and I'm thinking to myself, huh, I think I could use one of those functions that was inside of that useful tools file. Actually, yeah, I need to simulate rolling a dice in my program. Well, instead of having to go over here, copy this function and then paste it over here into my program, I can actually just import this useful tools file and I'll be able to import all of these functions and all of these variables and attributes. So the way I can do that is just by coming up here and I'm just gonna go right at the top of my file and I'm just gonna say import and then I wanna type in the name of the file that I wanna import. So I'm just gonna say useful underscore tools. And Python's gonna be smart enough to know that it should go off and grab all the stuff from this usefultools.py file. So once I've used that import statement, I can actually use all of the functions inside of that useful tools file. So for example, I could simulate rolling a dice. I could say useful tools dot, and now I'm actually able to access all of the attributes from inside that file. So when I say useful tools dot, you'll see down here in my little suggestions menu, it's telling me like beetles, feet and miles, get file extension, meters and kilometers, roll dice. So it's giving me access to all of the stuff that was in that file. So over here, I could just say like roll dice and we could pass this like a 10, we'll roll a 10 sided dice. And now this should actually be able to run that function. So we'll, we'll simulate rolling a 10 sided dice. So you can see we got four. And this is a really core concept in Python, which is importing functionality from external Python files. And this is like huge in Python, and this is seriously gonna change the way that you create your uh, Python files. So you'll notice like I didn't have to copy any functions or any variables or anything over into this file, and yet I was able to use all the stuff that was inside this useful tools file. So that is huge and honestly, it's gonna save you a lot of time because you can write something once and then you can import it into your other files. And so that's really the basics of using modules. I mean, modules are very simple. A module is just any external Python file that you wanna use some stuff inside of it. I wanna show you guys a place where you can go to find a huge list of modules. So I'm gonna go over here to my web browser and I'm on this website, it's actually like the official Python docs. Um, and basically all I did to get here was just type in list of Python modules in Google. And depending on the version of Python you're using, you're gonna wanna make sure that you click the right one. I clicked on the version three one. And over here on this page, you can see there's just a huge list of Python modules. And these are basically modules inside of Python that you can just access. So. Essentially, there's like all of this awesome code that's already been written for you. And so if there's some sort of functionality that you wanna have inside of your Python program, chances are there's a module in here 
that has that functionality. So there's all sorts of stuff you can do. I mean, if you just look through this list, like you'll see a huge collection of basically just, you know, a bunch of either Python variables or Python functions, just, you know, things that you can use to make your programs better. So here's what I would recommend, like head over to this page and just sort of look through a lot of these different modules, you know, see what you can see. And honestly, like if you click on one of them, it'll bring you to a page that talks about like how to use it. It'll tell you like how to import it and just, you know, some basics about it. And this is sort of like the list that's on the official Python docs. But here's the other thing. The Python community is huge. There's tons of developers who use Python and you can actually find a lot of third party modules. So if you just go online and, you know, look up like Python module for doing X or Python module for doing Y, chances are somebody out there has already written a Python module to do what you're trying to do. So if you get good at using modules and you get good at, you know, looking for them and finding them, you can actually save yourself a bunch of time because chances are that somebody's already written a module to do, you know, what you're trying to do or like part of what you're trying to do. So now that we've taken a look at all these different Python modules, I want to just kind of dive in a little bit deeper into how we can actually use these things. So I mean, you'll notice here there's a lot of files, right? There's a lot of different modules that we apparently have access to in Python. But the question is, where are all these files stored, right? When I was over here in my program, for example, I was using this useful tools.py file. Like I knew where that was. I created that file. I was directly involved in making it and I just imported it over here. It was pretty easy, right? But what about all of these files, right? What about all of these modules over here? Like where are all of these stored? And there's basically two types of modules here. There's built-in modules, which means they're just built into the Python language. So we kind of just automatically have access to them. And there's external modules. And a lot of these external modules are just stored in basically the same folder that we installed Python on our computer. So for example, let's look at a couple of these, right? We have um, like base 64, BDB, bin ASCII, like if I come over here and you'll see I'm over here in my little file explorer, I have my Python project, which is draft. There's also this other folder over here called external libraries. If I was to click down on this and I come down here, you can see it's just the version of Python that I'm, I'm using. There's a folder here called lib, and this is a very important folder. This is basically storing all of those external modules. So you can see if I scroll down here, we have all of these different like modules, right? So here's that base 64, here's BDB, right? A lot of these external modules are stored inside of this lib folder. and like I said, there's external modules. There's also a few modules that are just like built-in modules. They're not going to be stored inside of here. And you can actually tell. So for example, if I was to come over here and click on base 64, it tells me where the source code is. So the source codes in lib forward slash base 64, we were able to see that, right? I was, I saw that inside of my lib folder. Uh, this bin ASCII though, for example, if I click on this, you'll notice that this isn't giving me a folder because this is basically just like built into Python. So we don't have to worry about, uh, you know, locating that file. It's just kind of like, it just kind of works. So some of these are external, some of them are built in. And I want to show you guys, uh, in addition to using these modules, right? So there's a lot of good stuff here. And honestly, you could spend, you know, years and years just learning about all these different modules. But a lot of times you're going to want to use modules that other people have written. Um, and, uh, you know, there's a lot of uh, developers uh, who work on Python and who write different modules. So there's a lot of useful modules out there that aren't included in this list, right? They're not going to be inside of this lib folder by default. And what we can actually do is we can install those external modules, those third party modules that don't just come pre-installed with Python. And I'm gonna show you guys how to do that really quick. So the first thing you need to do obviously is find a Python module that you want to install, that you want to download. Um, and I have actually used one in the past, um, Python docs. It's a external module that you can use to basically use Python to create Word documents, which is pretty cool. So you can like format Word documents inside of it. So I'm just gonna look that up here in Google. I'm just gonna type in Python docs. And look, here's the thing, there's tons of these external modules. You don't have to use Python docs. 
I'm just giving you guys an example. Um, but really, if you just look up like useful third-party Python modules, there's going to be lists of hundreds of these things online. Uh, in my case, though, Python Docs has a website, and it basically just has like some installation instructions. So I'm going to come over here, and it tells me that I can install Python Docs using the command pip install Python Docs. So this brings us to uh, something I want to talk to you guys about, which is pip. And pip is essentially a program. And actually, if you have a newer version of Python 3, it comes pre-installed with Python 3. And you can use pip to install Python modules. It's referred to as a package manager. And a package manager basically just allows you to like install, manage, update, and uninstall like different Python modules. So pip is extremely useful. And in order for us to install Python docs, we're gonna have to use pip. So I'm gonna show you guys how we can do that. What I wanna do is open up the command prompt or the terminal on my computer. If you're on a Mac, you wanna open up your terminal. If you're on a Windows computer, you wanna open up your command prompt. I'm using a Windows right now. So I'm just gonna come down to the search bar and type in CMD. And this command prompt should come up. So I'm gonna click this. Inside of the command prompt, we can actually use pip. The first thing we want to do is just check to make sure that pip's installed. And like I said, if you have a newer version of Python 3, pip should come just pre-installed uh, and it should just work in here. If you don't have a newer version of Python 3 though, you might have to install pip separately. And there's tons of instructions online on how to install pip. So I'm just going to check to make sure that I have it. I'm going to type in pip hyphen hyphen version and this should spit out the version of pip that I currently have. So as long as we have pip, then we're ready to install an external or a third party Python module. All I have to do is just say pip install, and now I just wanna type in the name of the Python module. So in the case of Python docs, it was just Python docs like that. Now again, you don't have to install Python docs. I'm just doing this for this tutorial, just to kinda of show you guys how this is gonna work. But you know what you want to do is go online and look up some third-party external Python modules. And generally, like I'd say 90 to 95 percent of the time, you're going to be able to just install them using pip. In the off case that you can't install them using pip, chances are there'll be like some detailed installation instructions. But I would say for the most part, any like legitimate Python module is going to be able to install it using pip. Um, so over here, I'm just going to say pip install and then the module name. So Python hyphen docs. And when I click enter, this is gonna go off and install Python docs for us. So I'm just gonna click enter and it's gonna go off and install everything we need for Python docs. So you can see we successfully installed Python docs 0.8.6. So I'm gonna show you guys where exactly this got placed. So normally when we install a external third party module, it's gonna get put inside of this lib folder but it's gonna get put inside of a special folder in here called site packages. So site packages is a special folder and if I open this folder, you'll see now we have this docs folder and we also have this Python docs 0.8.6 pi 3.6.egg info folder. So these two folders um, are basically included in that module installation. So you can see this docs folder has a bunch of different Python files and has a bunch of stuff in here that we can use. So if I wanted to use this inside of one of my programs, I'm just gonna refer to the name of the module. So in our case, it's just gonna be docs. So I used Python docs in order to install it, but we're gonna use docs if we want to import it. So I could come up here and I could say import docx and now I can actually use it. So I can just say like docs dot whatever. And you can see there's a bunch of different stuff down here. There's like a document document part, image part. There's a bunch of stuff that we can use with this. And obviously, depending on the Python module you install, there's gonna be different instructions. But you can see it got stored down here in this site packages folder. If I wanted to remove this, I could use pip to do it. So I could just say pip uninstall and we could just again, say the module name, so Python docs, and pip will now uninstall this on our computer. So if I was to go back over to this folder, you'll see that those two, that docs folder and then that other uh, folder disappeared. So they're no longer here, and I'm actually not gonna be able to use this anymore. So that's sort of the ins and outs of using modules. Now again, there's tons of these modules, and 
I can make dozens and dozens of Python courses covering each one of these modules. Uh, you know, the built-in modules, the, uh, the modules that are included by default and external modules. There's tons of these things out there. And really, as a Python programmer now, what you can do is you can go out and play around with these different modules. I showed you the ins and outs of installing them, and you can use pip to install all these different modules. And you know, you can make sure that you have them by checking the site packages folder or the libs folder. But really now it's on you to just kind of go out and use these modules and don't shy away from this because modules are a huge part of Python and you're definitely going to want to include them in your Python stack. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.